for relapsed T-cell lymphoma, um, we and others have taken a strategy that if we're looking at curative therapy, meaning the disease goes away forever, then we're thinking about something as a bridge to allo transplant. And there was some data presented from a large North American series um, uh, at ASH last year that showed that if you go in in complete remission, almost 50% of patients are alive in remission at two, four, five years. And there is some subtype specific differences. Again, patients with angioaminoblastic T-cell lymphoma seem to be uh, fair particularly well and maybe have a strong uh, GVL effect. And then at ICML, we just saw some additional data looking at some large registry data, again, really showing the same thing, that patients who go in in complete remission with relapse T-cell lymphoma have a real cure rate that approaches is 50%. Again, a little better for angioaminoblastic T-cell lymphoma. So there's some subtype specific consideration. And those who go in in partial response or, uh, or um, without a response uh, do have, some patients have long-term remissions, but they're, but they're much less. So I think that really sets the stage that if we're treating with curative intent, we're thinking about something as a bridge to allo, and the best bridge to allo would be something that creates a CR. So then you're looking, one of the things where, as we're evaluating new therapies, a lot of these new targeted therapies that we just talked about um, do have the possibility of bridging patients uh, to transplant by creating complete responses. Um, and then, uh, so, so I think you're really looking at high response rates in the patients that are on their way to transplant. And that's kind of how we think about it in patients where we're really not thinking about moving to allotransplant because of all the toxicity and risk of that therapy. Um, then we're really looking at treatments that if they provide a response, that response can be maintained. Um, so a lot of these new therapies that include the, um, valimetastat that include the JAK inhibitors and includes things like romadepsin and duvalisib. Those are, are therapies that often people can be on long-term without an accumulation of side effects. So I think those strategies are really nice. And there's a really nice overlap, uh, both between clinical trials, looking at better, more active therapies and what is probably or often very good patient management, which is giving a targeted agent that can be continued long-term safely. Um, so that really fits a lot of how we manage, um, and then there wasn't a lot of new data. There was just some talks on immunotherapy and T-cell lymphoma. And I would say, you know, without going into a long discussion, it's very early days. And I think we're just sort of understanding how to harness the immune system, both actively and safely against T-cell lymphomas, uh, but a number of very early uh, ideas that are, are moving into clinical trials.